you just have to be nostalgic for Goblin Green bases. Yeah, uh, I've never got that. I don't know if you've ever tried to use any of these retro paints. If you haven't, they are a nightmare. What? What does that mean? Are you one of those people who thinks Space Marines should always have helmets? The heads on their own, just like old men. <laughs> like, just look like they're called like See, Jim and Dave and that. Jim and Dave. Have you painted much uh, in the last week? I had a bit of a meltdown with it. I'm not exaggerating. I nearly put it in the bin. <laughs> James is gone. I know. Finally. No, no, no I'm joking. I'm joking. Can I please start the episode like that? I'm like, you to edit that out. I don't know. Um, yeah, James is gone. So we're on our own. No, no Blood Angel chat today, please. I mean, I'll, I'll try. Oh, you're a Blood Angel back. fan as well, though. So like, I'm like, a bit. I can't get away from it. To be honest, like, I don't feel like I look like a Blood Angel fan at all sat next to James. True. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, Blood Angels. I like Blood Angels. Yeah. But at a perfectly normal, rational level, I think they're cool. Yeah. He takes, I get that it, all he the, takes it to 11. So. I get that all the time with like bands and stuff. Like someone will introduce me. I'll be like moderately into a band and someone will introduce me to a super fan of that band and say that I'm also a super <laughs> fan. And then I'll talk to that person for like two minutes and be like, I'm not on your level. I'm not being funny. You could show up, right? You could have like a band like tattoo on your arm. You could yeah. show up and be like, yeah, I'm a big fan. They're like, well, actually, I was listening to them since before they was in yeah, the band. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've been showed up many a time like that. Um, yeah. So James is gone. Just us two this week. So uh, you might have uh, noticed from the topic of this episode that we're going to discuss something that uh, probably goes against the grain of James's opinions. Yeah. Potentially. I, I would I would still be interested to get his thoughts on it, but we did think it'd be a good one um, to to have Remove without some bias. without him here. <laughs> yeah, because we well we've we've heard his thoughts on it a lot. I think over the last few weeks. So yeah, yeah. and I think anyway, we all know his thoughts on it as well. That's the other thing. He he's very overt about his <laughs> thoughts on it. <laughs> have you painted much uh, in the last week? Um, not really. I'm still, st I've kind of mentioned it before, I think. Um, but I've been doing one, the Warhammer Heroes, the one that I nabbed in the preview thing. And uh, I, I'm not exaggerating. I nearly put it in the bin. Just <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? Go on. I've just Tell like, us your woes. Oh, I, just, I had a bit of a meltdown with it. Like, I was literally texting my friend going, like, I've messed it up. I can't do it. I'm not <laughs> going to paint it. Like I'm done. I'm done. Um, I literally like, I, I hate the, the, I don't hate, I just find difficult the blue plastic thing. For some reason, it just feels different. Those models just feel different. To really? Me. Yeah, they don't feel like they clean as easy. Mm. And I, there was a few things that I've missed on like the clean up and stuff. And then I sprayed it. I went back to clean it up. I just made a bit of a mess of a few things. And then, trying to get I got the first I'm doing black armor mm. not to ruin it too much but we're going to be talking about it a bit more on the next episode I think I'm doing black armor and I haven't painted a space marine in ages really? like I just haven't painted a space marine in ages I think I got so like put what have you been, off what have you been doing instead uh, I would do like orcs which will you know we're in October now so we'll talk about well, that we'll talk about bit. that in a minute yeah um it was all like little smaller things. Like I'd done orcs, I'd done like underworld stuff or I'd done like... Just I'd like random like, characters. Yeah, and... like little random characters and stuff. Um, even like within 40k, I'd painted more like Tau. I'd had a Harlequin kill team that I did. That was going back a little while now. But overall, I think I just got really bored by his face rings and ended up not painting any for a while. So I was looking forward to this. And... Um, yeah, there's just a few things like that I should have thought about before and didn't. And then we we've just done like three episodes on like planning and stuff. <laughs> and I did plan, but I think that was part of me was like also the deadlines for this keep kept moving. Mm. I've got longer on it than I thought I had now. But originally it was like, oh, get it done next week. Uh, yeah. And then maybe okay, now we we can have another week. Okay, now we can have another week. So I've like initially I was trying to be quick. But then I decided right now I'm going to like fully edge highlight it, two stages, whatever. And I don't know if that's going to happen, to be honest. <laughs> but like, even just down to uh, two mistake I ran into, which I've never experienced before. Obviously, it's black armor. I wanted to do the first 
highlight stage with Incubi. And I like, for some reason, just like thinned it down too much, I guess. And it's like, by the time I was, I'd done like a whole leg or something. And by the time it was done, it like dried and was like invisible pretty you can much. See it, yeah. And I was like, well, I can't put it on too much thicker than that. It was like finding that sweet spot again, I think. I haven't done that in ages. Like I haven't, even the stuff that I had been doing, I hadn't had to like solidly with, edge highlight. I find with that though, sometimes I'll do the first stage highlight and it's like barely visible. Mm. But even then, sometimes if you trust the process and you do commit to that second highlight, you'll realize how much of a difference it, it makes. Because I've done... That's why often people will cut a corner with someone like that, right? So you're going to speed paint something, which is fair enough. But I don't think uh, you realize how valuable those gradual transitions are mm. until you see it all done. Because yeah. if you if you did that model and you didn't do that first stage highlight and you just went straight to the second one, I bet you, and you put them side by side, even though... They're completely different. Even though when you're looking at that model where you've done the two stages highlights, like in a vacuum on its own, and you think like, oh, it's not noticeable. What was the point? But then when you see it without... Yeah. Makes more of a difference than you think. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping I can, I'm going to have a little reset. I'm just going to go, I'm, tonight actually, I'm going to like sit down, just go over everything that I'm not happy with on it. Mm. Touch it all up, reset a little bit and then see how I can go. Fix what you've done before you carry on. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then hopefully, hopefully there'll be pictures of it at some point that people <laughs> can see. But I don't know if that, I don't know if that'd be the case. Um, what about you? What have you been painting? I've been doing a Gulliman commission. Mm-hmm. You have? Because I, well, I, I knew that because I gave you it. But... <laughs> it was a nice act of Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Oh, Gulliman. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've not done a, uh... no, that's not true. I've done an abandoned one. I like first, first started painting, but I'll be honest with you, I like don't even remember painting that. I think I painted it in like a day. And... Was that for us? Or was that no, no, no. That was like right when I first got into the hobby. Like... Yeah. So you haven't done like a, Primark I've not done one of the size. big Primark size models in a while. I've done like, um, I've done 30k Primark. I've done a, um, I've done a Horus mm. uh, last year, year before. But this is the first like plastic one. I haven't done oh, a Lion yet. 40k. Like I haven't that. done a Baden like since getting half good at painting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, Gullum's a fun model. I can't believe how much trim there is. <laughs> <laughs> it's more trim than man. Are you... <laughs> Are you a uh, what camp are you in with this kind of the Thousand Suns question? Do you are you spraying gold or are you spraying blue? Spray the blue, spray blue, paint the trim, mm. not spray gold, paint the. Here's blue. my ethos on that, right? Yeah, the trim is raised off the surface of the model. Mm. If you're gonna go in and paint blue after the fact, so you spray the model gold and you went and you're gonna paint all the panels blue. Even though the blue total on the model might be the same amount of surface error, it might be less, whatever. If you go in and do that, there is zero chance you're not going to have to clean up the gold trim anyway. Yeah. So my thinking is, if you spray the whole model blue, the surface is raised. So if you've got the brush parallel to the trim and you're brushing over you it carefully, touch theoretically, the your brush shouldn't be able to touch the blue anyway. Yeah. So I painted the whole model blue, then shaded the whole model because I was like, I don't want to... I'm trying to avoid as much cleanup as possible because obviously with a commission, time is of the essence. So yeah. paint the whole model blue, shaded the whole model, done all the blue shading. And then it's contentious whether you would highlight the blue first or do the gold trim. I caved and did the gold trim because I just wanted a bit of a win yeah. on the model. Yeah. So uh, I've done the uh, the Instagram classic and I've painted a leg on him so far just to feel oh, like perfect. I have, yeah. I have an idea what That's I'm doing. That's basically done. Let's just send that to the client. Yeah. Leg. Yeah. Space Marine leg. Yeah. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said you wanted Gullum and I assume you only wanted his leg. <laughs> I assume you wanted his right thigh. <laughs> I assume you only wanted his leg so you could post it on Instagram. Exactly. I, I guess it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there'll be pictures of that up soon. Yeah. Hopefully. I think we're going to talk about it next episode, hopefully. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know what's interesting is the f- how fun it is to paint a face that's bigger than a normal marine head? Because I would say that how, Gullum- how much bigger? We were kind of talking about like yeah. helmet scale on those models. I don't think. The other day. I don't think the head is as much bigger as like the rest of his body is, if you get what I mean. Like I would say that like the whole model is like double the size of a normal Marine, but his head is certainly not double the size. Yeah. It's like, it's bigger, but it's not like. I think it would look ridiculous if his head was as much bigger as he's just a big old. He would look like a bubble head. Just a big old melon on top, like a Funko Pop. (laughs) So if you put, as it is currently, Hmm. if you put 
Dullerman's head on an intercessor. Oh, that's not happening. It would look weird. That would look ludicrous, yeah. Is that, would that look weird? That would look absolutely Why has no one done it yet? I don't know. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe because the model is too expensive to waste on a... True, yeah. Well, no, if you, that, that, if you was going to do the helmet, though. Yeah. You have, you someone's should, someone's and, got a spare Gullerman helmet knocking around. And you should, you should do the helmet always. On a Are you one of those people if who think space marines should always have helmets? It's the coolest thing about the the coolest thing about the design of space marines is the helmet. That's what we love space marines for. The helmet looks sick. So just having like the heads on their own, just like old men, <laughs> like, just look like they're called like See, Jim and Dave and that Jim and Dave <laughs> and like, or, or they could have a space marine helmet on. And it's like. Incredible. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's the painter in me knows. No offense to anyone called Jim and Dave. I imagine <laughs> we've got a few Jim and Daves listening to this podcast. I think it's the painter in me that knows that from a composition standpoint, humans are great at seeing faces and it draws your eye. Like that's true. So naturally on a model. So if I see a marine with a human head on it and it's painted very, very well, it your eye is instantly drawn to the focal point of the model. From a painting point of view, like and uh, again. I'm saying specifically on Space Marines. I'm not saying every model yeah, should, yeah. should have a helmet on. I just think from in terms of a cool rule of cool, Space Marine helmets are just what that's if they're like, the cool thing. What if they're like hold it, what about like Lazarus? He's like holding his helmet. How much better would he look if it, like <laughs> do you know how annoyed I was at that <laughs> that helmet is so cool and you can't put it on his head. Is that not an think. option? I don't think that's an option. I'm pretty sure he's either holding it or he's holding like a gun or something, but then you don't have the same helmet. Like the, the helmet has like fingers sculpted onto it. And that, at the time when that come out, I'm fairly sure, I don't know if I, that, that we deal with every new release. So this is all like blurring into one now, but I'm pretty sure when that came out, it was like a talking point of the fact that like, oh, we've finally got a winged helmet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's got fingers sculpted to the side of it, <laughs> so we can't really do much with it. I'm sure that was, I'll, I'll, I'll fact check myself, but I'm sure that was the case. Because there, there used to be, there was an old model in the 7th edition box. Um, Is that Dark Vengeance? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that had Captain Balthazar, which did have a, a, it had a big helmet, big like wing helmet on it. Yeah. yeah. I painted one of those. Yeah. yeah. That was sick. Sick helmet. You're not. If if the model comes with that, you're not going to go. Oh, I'll put the normal head on it. You know how we spoke about like this wasn't going to be the Blood Angels fanboy podcast. You've yeah. just turned oh, into I'm, the Dark I'm Angels. I'm using this, <laughs> using your platform. I'm using my platform for important issues, and there should be more more available winged helmets in 40k. Specifically, winged helmets. Winged helmets are the coolest version of the helmets. So we've gone two steps up. So not only have you got to have a helmet, you've got to have yeah. wings on it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think helmets are cool. Well, I've got nothing against a helmet. Yeah, I just think they look they look cool. Like that, that's, the cool, that's the cool... I don't buy into the whole like, oh, they have to have a helmet because like, it doesn't make sense thing. I don't get that. I don't mind. Like, I mean, fair point, no. Fair point, yeah, but I don't mind. but is it impossible to conceive that this Marine is like, you know, on a lunch break... Stood in a stood in a thunderhawk. He took his helmet off for a minute. Needs I, I I I also do like though. I I do like the kind of stoic poses. So sometimes I can if they're standing, they're holding the helmet. I, I get it. Still looks cool if he's wearing. Even if if I was a space marine, I was on my lunch break. I would wear my helmet. <laughs> How would you mean? Oh, they'll work it out. They'll work oh, out. What? Oh, I'm going to use your argument against you. What? We're in the year forty thousand, <laughs> and you can't work out a way to eat. Without without taking your helmet off. Some, I'm sure they've got I bet something. there's some like feeding tube. Those little like vent right. things, I reckon they just sort of open. You know, like um <laughs> like a fan in your car. <laughs> how they open. I reckon those little vents. Like a mesh on the grill. <laughs> yeah, they just open and you can just put the food in there, I reckon. I'd imagine there's probably or a straw. Just, probably it's just a straw inside the helmet, right? Yeah, probably. something like that. There you go. Answer your own question. Helmets are cool. <laughs> uh new month, October, the kids call it. October. Do the kids call it? You are. You're the kids. I don't know. You, I don't. I, do I don't keep up with these sort of things. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of the kids, I unfortunately yeah. am not familiar with. Uh, yeah, with the October. coolest trends. But October gonna, is a. Uh, it's upon us. Is there one for every month, or is it just? October? I think it's just October, as far as I'm aware. March from a crag. Is a thing. Mm -hmm. People paint ultramarines in March. 
big pint of orange brains all the time, though, right? Like, yeah, but it's like an excuse. It does make me laugh when you see like, um, like Nick Baton or something posted in March for McCraig's like, Every month is March for a <laughs> yeah. Nick Bayton. Um, yeah, maybe we should invent some more for the rest of the months. But Dracari December. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Very Christmassy. Yeah. Off the cuff. <laughs> I'm not coming up with, with anything too too punny. But, uh. Um yeah, October, are you gonna do anything for it? Oh, I'm I'm gonna lie to myself here on the podcast and say Lying I would to like yourself to do an orc. and all the listeners. I'm going to lie to all of you here and say that I would like to paint an orc in October. Do you know what I do want to do? It's like semi related. I've had Bayard's Revenge for pushing a year now. I feel like that's almost offensive to do in October because it's an orc like. There's an orc on it. Killed in it. Yeah, but it's an orc being. being yeah, I've got beaten. to paint an orc. Yeah, but like a dead, not a dead <laughs> one. Like, it's just, you're supposed to be celebrating orcs. Well, like, I don't have an orc army. A... I'm not going to disrupt my whole like. Painting you have regime. just recently painted Gaskell as well, so it's not too long ago. Oh yeah, I did paint Gaskell. Yeah, yeah. That was a that's an orc, isn't it? That was yeah. That so was you, in can, like... you can post that in October and be like, "Oh, just finish this." Yeah, just finish this in June. That's the uh, right <laughs> yeah. time for for October. Yeah, you yeah. Can paint anything for October? Uh, well, I've got a half painted orc that I actually paused um, because of doing the Tyranid for this, and now the the Warhammer Heroes thing. Um, so. Given that I'll be done with the, the Space Marine by the end of the weekend, probably. What better time to pick back up on my orc than <laughs> which, October? Which orc are you painting? It's the, uh, I forget the name, but it's the original Warhammer Plus. The first year oh, okay. Warhammer Plus um, Mega Boss or something. I don't know what, don't what know it's called. It's, like, it's, it's Sigma, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm not too familiar with the names, but really cool model. I feel like I vibe a bit better with the Age of Sigma Aurux than I do yeah. some of the 40k Orcs. I mean, when those, when that... Um, I don't like the Beast Nagas, though, personally. That's not really my vibe. But when... The ones, like, the meg, the boss in, like, Megara. Yeah, like, that like the actual, sick. Yeah, yeah, like, and you look at some of the newer stuff, most recently with, like, um, the one on the big, like, Moor Crusher or whatever mm. it's called, like, yeah, so cool. So cool. I do feel like they, there's probably room for them to do some crossover like surely you get people using the AOS orcs as 40k orc models and stuff I don't like know that. I'd imagine so but I mean like de demons you can take in both games demons are literally yeah like, both. like that, I think because the they, same range, I think because they exist it? separately in each of the law yeah which I always found really cool um but I wonder yeah I wonder if maybe this probably this probably I mean if you're into orcs and you're doing yeah it's orc, at least opportunity orc, for conversion. People that are into surely. orcs more than anyone else, I can imagine. Like if someone was into space marines, and then I don't think they would necessarily one hundred percent also just be well into stormcast yeah, titles, yeah. for example. That's like the the next equivalent. Someone who's into orcs, I can imagine, do, does just want all of the orcs. Yeah, like they want the sigma ones as but well. Orky people are mega into converting, so like I mean, there's surely opportunity. True, yeah, there. exactly. Because I mean, obviously, like yeah, they haven't got guns, but like you could probably take the bodies and. Whacking Put some of it. the guns on them or something. Yeah. Someone must have done. We're talking about, oh, I'm sure we're going to come up with an orc conversion that yeah. no one's ever come up yeah. with before. What an original idea. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, an original idea for orc time before. Yeah. You. If you've never thought of using <laughs> yeah. the other orc range. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I, yeah, I do much prefer the, the Age of Sigma orcs, even for, like, I feel like they could, yeah, be utilized as, as 40k ones as well. But yeah. I'm sure it's been done many times already. Probably. Uh, should we do some viewers' comments? This is always fun. Yes. Uh, this is in relation to uh, James's mental uh, toothbrush hack from, uh, from last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ricky8497 says, uh, hack using baking soda uh, in a paste with a toothbrush on resin models is great for lifting off that stubborn mold-releasing agent. Oh, fair. Um I've always used like dish soap. Yeah, I've kind of just like always. Washed that being them said, like that. though, I've absolutely washed resin models with dish soap and then sprayed them and gone, "Oh, it hasn't stuck." So yeah, I don't, don't have too much experience with with resin models. Um, I feel like it's so much like luck, to be honest. Yeah, li like, I mean, obviously, when I say experience, I mean me painting them. Obviously, yeah, yeah. dealt with them through here mm -hmm. for years. Like we we've seen we've seen all sorts of 
defects on, on, on yeah. different resin models and stuff and sometimes you just don't have an answer for it but, but I've got no. to assume that because it's like much more human intervention with the casting process like odds are probably one you get has got more mold release on it than another like yeah I've had ones before yeah. that have come out like literally like Reddit ago and then I've had other models that have like literally like visibly greasy yeah yeah it does yeah it's mostly luck but maybe that's a good tip to yeah I'd imagine, I guess because yeah. baking soda is probably slightly abrasive as well so that's yeah. Good tip. Give that a go. Solid. Uh, William Lovell says, uh, never been that big on painting. It's been more of a means to an end. But listening to this podcast has motivated, motivated me uh, to try and enjoy each stage of uh, painting a bit more and improve. I've bought the new Terminators and will follow your advice on painting them individually. I also bought a pack of refreshers <laughs> to make up my own mind. Right. There's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> No, uh, honestly, genuinely, probably the best comment we could get. I think like that's su- that's perfect, right? That's kind of what we want to be encouraging. Um, even the refreshers bit. I'm glad he's going to make up his own mind. I'm glad he's going to go and get his own refreshers. And make well, up his own when mind. he's tasted the refreshers and he realizes that I'm completely right, I uh, yeah. I mean, well, I don't want to get I don't want to get into refreshers again, but. I think that's that's basically the perfect comment, isn't it? That we can receive like that's exactly the response that we want. And if we make people actually care a little bit more about painting, then that's good. Hopefully, he does not enjoy the refreshers. Oh no, I hope he does. I hope he does enjoy the refreshers. <laughs> we so, wish you well. Yeah, I'll tell you what. By the way, Joe messaged me again in the week with another screenshot of his poll. <laughs> You're determined to die on this hill. Someone I was talking earlier, I was talking to Ned, who's on the team. Mm. He was like, yeah, yeah, sorry. I know you're having like a, um, I know you're having a bit of a stress, like bit, you're a bit of a busy one or whatever this week. Um, get yourself some refreshers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's bleeding over into my work life now, it's your George. work life. <laughs> the refreshers thing is bleeding over into, it's causing havoc. I like that you're putting this on me. It when is you. When you are the one. <laughs> It's all you. <laughs> you come out with this hot take on the podcast. You out yourself. It wasn't my, that wasn't my hot take. I don't, I don't want to get onto the refreshers. <laughs> we'll I don't want to get onto the refreshers again. Oh, God, we'll move on. Uh, Evil Miniature says, uh, great episode as always. Just want to say that I really felt the lighting mistake. Uh, this is in regards to the painting lamp that we spoke to last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, first two years I painted, I had one of those table lamps that was the height of my face. Uh, mm-hmm. So I used to lean forward to see the model under the light. After about one year, I started to get these massive strains in the back of my neck that would last for days. Uh, Bought a light with a flexible arm, and I've never had the issue again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the exact issue that James is talking about, isn't it? Like, I never had it that bad, personally, but... Do you know know what's really ironic? After that episode last week, where we spoke about, like, having your nice chair and having your nice lamp, Mm. I'd done my neck in painting. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Why? Where were you painting? I was painting at home in my nice secret labs chair with my nice overhead painted lamp, but I was sitting like a goblin, Joe. I don't know what came <laughs> over me. You know, you like just start to get a bit uncomfortable and you like, you, you just, you know, you're sitting like an idiot and you know, it's going to give you back ache later. Be like, oh, I'm so comfortable, like slouching, like. Average refreshers enjoyer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sitting like a goblin with your little pack of refreshers. I didn't have any refreshers. I yeah. should have had though. That would have made. But yeah, I mean, sometimes. Obviously, I'm glad that that's now a resolved issue. But I do like when we point out these things that we get comments where people are like, "Oh yeah, I had that," and um, it just is a nice little bit of proof that we're not just sort of <laughs> making stuff up and and yelling into a void. Like that, it is definitely like a lot of the issues we talk about. Other people tend to comment and be like, "Oh yeah, I experienced that." Mm. Or so yeah, we're not alone. Nice. Uh, Witchkurt says on the topic of economical ways of cleaning your airbrush uh, I've been using 99% isopropyl alcohol for the past two years uh, it's about 10 times cheaper compared to airbrush cleaner I'm going to chime in on this I'm going to slightly disagree uh, for two reasons one isopropyl alcohol for some reason in the UK is like quite expensive quite expensive and also not like readily available like it is no I mean you, can, you can get it on Amazon I think yeah but like, you can't just like walk into a shop and like just no. buy it. Like we don't, if we don't have it. It's not a thing that's just like. It's not a thing really that's like on the shelf, even in like yeah, like B and Q or whatever. Conversely to that, uh, I'm not necessarily saying you are going to get problems because I'm not going to speak out of turn. I've got not got a ton of experience with this, but one of the advantages of the branded airbrush cleaner is that not only does it 
act as a cleaning agent, but it's also a lubricant for your needles and your seals. So if you're using the airbrush cleaner, it's not just a case of to get all the paint out. It's also a, basically a conditioner to make sure that like when you put it away, as well. it's like a maintenance thing. So when you put, when you sprayed a load of isopropyl through it and it dries out all of your seals and then you put it down in the box, and you don't, if you're not going to touch it for another few weeks or a couple of months, yeah, uh, you're probably more likely to see it drying out or possibly having an issue with a seal failing. I would say price-wise, just off the top of my head, I think the Vallejo cleaner is probably about the same price as the alcohol over here. Mm. You get more of the alcohol, but if you're thinning down the cleaner, as yeah, George, diluting it with water George's like you're supposed to. <laughs> the other week, you'll probably end up with around the same amount of usage, I think. But you know, whatever works for for people, I suppose. I'm always I always get a bit nervous when people start bringing up uh, the 99 percent alcohol, whatever, because it's like. The amount of different things I've seen people recommend this for, like mm. people strip miniatures with it and stuff like that, and like always, there's an alter, there's an alternative, like a different thing to use. Yeah, and I've always, for anything else, found the opposite, like the the other thing to be a bit better. So I don't know. It just feels like straight away there's like more potential issues when you start slinging that stuff around. So if it was like a massive price deficit i could understand like maybe one of the cheap out but at least in the uk anyway like doesn't doesn't seem worth it to me yeah. personally um i'll let you decide yeah uh, it might be different <laughs> we'll end with a funny one i thought it was quite good uh jeff nell says uh what's with the nose rings are they in a cult <laughs> right <laughs> the weird do you know the mental thing about that we've had a couple of comments really on like videos of me I think you might have been in some of them as well, like on the shorts and the clips where people mention the nose rings. And it's like, that's actually why James isn't here. He's getting his nose pissed. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, um, but the, the, <laughs> the, the um, it's such a weird thing to, I had one the other day. This comment, I think, is like a little bit more in jest, a little bit more yeah, funny. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I had one the other day that I left it on there. People can go and find this comment if they want. Don't like, reply and like abuse this person or whatever but they commented saying something like um i put it on my story they commented saying imagine getting your nose pierced unironically <laughs> and i was like imagine getting it done ironically <laughs> what what does that mean like it's so weird it's such a weird thing imagine for getting it done ironically. unironically like what what are what people are Doing it for irony, are they? You know, it'd be really funny, Joe. I've already got my nose pierced. Yeah. Oh, how thing. ironic would that yeah. be? Let's put a needle through my face. How funny! <laughs> like so weird. But yeah, weird thing for the uh, the Warhammer community. I was going to gonna say. I was going to say it's a weird thing to see in uh, in Look, our hobby of all things. There's there's, there's plenty the of things. home of tattoos, piercings, and heavy metal music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's plenty of things that I thought I was going to get ripped on in the YouTube comments as we started this podcast. Didn't think it was. Didn't that. think it was going to be that. No. If anything, I thought. I'd get a few, oh, cool nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't think that. But yeah, weird, right? Weird that was thing. me thinking like, oh, I'm, worried. I'm a bit insecure about how I look. Maybe maybe someone will point something out. At least I've got a nose ring. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, weird. Is that a cult thing? Nose ring? I don't think so. I think that was the joke. Also, but... we're, on the diff we're on different nostrils, I think. Yeah, we're on different nostrils. <laughs> so it can't, can't, be, can't be like a... Can't be like a strict. Maybe that's to differentiate like your hierarchy in the in the oh, cult. Maybe, yeah. Maybe like once you ascend, you get like this the other side done. <laughs> yeah. You get both. James done. comes in next episode, he's got like septum, both yeah, of their bits exactly. up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, weird thing for the Warhammer community to be getting hung up on, but fair play, I suppose. Whatever. Thanks for the comments. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> it's all in good fun. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world class team here at Siege Studios. With a variety of painting levels to meet your needs and your budget, whether you want a centerpiece character or a full-blown gaming army. We offer well above the industry standard in terms of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. Uh, topic for this week. Like we said, we alluded to earlier, James is not here. Mm -hmm. If James is anything other than a Blood Angel fan, he's a retro paint fan, he's a retro model fan, he's a 90s Warhammer kid, all the rage of late i've noticed there's a lot of buzz about the the retro sphere in warhammer obviously daz latham had the amazing uh 90s marine challenge 
lots of tutorials going up on YouTube these days uh, about the the pros and the amazing nostalgia. I thought, interestingly, we've had some conversations about this before, obviously. Mm. Me and you don't feel the retro like hype, right? Um, no, not to the extent of a lot of other people, it seems. I still think I have some more of it than you. Like I have some more acceptance and enjoyment of the retro I mean, I've no, I have no disdain for retro Warhammer. My, like, I think some of the old models are cool. Like I like the vibrant, like color schemes like on occasion it like bit pop like looks cool but i don't have any nostalgic attachment to it because it's way before my time for one yeah and also i've painted some retro models before and i've used some retro paints before and i am 100 percent in the camp of like the new stuff is way better <laughs> yeah so for me it's like more the era that's popular to be nostalgic about the second edition hmm. the early 90s the goblin green bases, the bright colors and everything. That isn't what I'm nostalgic for because I, again, I, I'm not not quite to the point of view, but I was just being born when, when that was <laughs> happening. So by the time I found Warhammer was in about 2000 and I can't even remember when I, we worked it out last time, but it was, 2000s. It, it was, like, it was early 2000s, I would say. Um, I think the 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 box the was the Battle for McCrack, which was the probably about two thousand and four, something like that. So I would have been like twelve. Um so I think that's like fourth edition or something. Yeah. Fifth edition, something like that. So Is the style that different to the nineties stuff, like by that point. It had like progressed a tiny bit. But not like a ton. Not loads, but it didn't look like the the if you look at like the Battle for McCrag box and everything, the the box art, the it, the quality, the models had changed. Were the models still metal? No, no, they were plastic. They were plastic, they were plastic yeah. yeah. Um, the paints had changed. They weren't like the blood red hex pots, yeah. Like things like the uh, with the white lids and everything. They they weren't that. So I have like a different nostalgia. I have like an early two thousands nostalgia, which in you know that's still that's ten years after this the bit that everyone actually is, gets nostalgic about. So. Still a little bit different. I don't have quite the... <laughs> I can't wait for like 2050 when I'm like, oh, do you remember Primaris Marines? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does... Yeah, it makes... It does make me wonder like, are are you your generation? Mm. <laughs> so, I, don't think it's of, a, I don't think it's a generation thing. I think it's just of, based on when you get into That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying generation as in age. I'm saying generation in terms of when you started painting or when you found War, Warhammer. People that found Warhammer in the last five years, are they going to be that nostalgic for like Leviathan? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it seems weird to me. Like, it seems weird at the time, doesn't it? But yeah, I think I think the that's obviously dependent though because the style is drastically different, obviously, and maybe that's why you don't see as much like nostalgia hype for like models that are like fifteen years ago. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like. The jump from like the nineties bright colours, goblin green, to the like the following phase era, if you will, was massive. And then the change from like painting models like ten years ago to now is not that different. Yeah. Yeah, I get like I say. In I terms guess, of style and like colour palettes and whatnot. I guess my one, like when I started and I haven't again, I haven't been painting solidly since then either. I was probably into it as a kid for like two years never seriously painted anything and then didn't look at it again until I was like 25 or something, 24. So I think nothing even necessarily really sticks out to me from being a kid. For some reason, the the early 90s stuff, for the people that were young when that early 90s stuff was hitting and that's when they were finding Warhammer, that stuff has just stuck with them. Mm. Like they love it. I'm sure there's like people now still that weren't necessarily around at that time, but I'm, like fall yeah. in love with the aesthetic of it. I yeah, guess. yeah, but I'm just saying it's not a case of it's not. That's the interesting part is we're saying we don't really have much nostalgia for it, but it's obviously not just oh it's nostalgia because I don't feel that way necessarily about the models that were out when I was ten years old. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's obviously something about it that just 
something a bit magical about that little bubble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's because it was so early on in in Warhammer overall, so it's got a bit of an historic feel to it. Like it's got bit it seems a bit more important. It seems like if you're painting a second edition Space Marine, you're painting a bit of history. Mm. Whereas if you're painting a fourth edition Space Marine, you're just painting an older model. Yeah, like there's no real big attachment to it. So I, remember, I do get it, but I remember when I was like uh, first picking this up again, like probably like four or five years ago. I remember uh, going on a bit of a hunt. I had like a bit of a fad of like quite like in the nineties aesthetic and whatnot. And I went on eBay and bought some like old retro models. I remember it being really weird because I was like, "Oh, these models are older than me." Yeah, like that was a weird yeah. like novel factor of it. Yeah, but I've painted some of those models and I did not. I didn't like the nostalgia of buying them. Well, not nostalgia, obviously, but like the the excitement of buying them was not nearly matched painting them. Like yeah, it fell yeah. pretty flat, pretty quick. I was very quickly like, ah, oh, this is why they don't make them like this anymore because the details are not sharp. The models, well, no, obviously, not the that models big. aren't like multi part at all. So like getting your brush in there is a nightmare. Mm. They're made of metal, so cleaning them is like a completely different thing altogether there is still like old obviously it's plastic, plastic stuff i know but so to speak like obviously yeah, the, yeah. the older pewter stuff yeah have you painted any retro models um only in so when i when i got back into uh warhammer as an adult i bought like a bulk load of like poorly painted space marines on ebay hmm. And I had, at the time, I had no concept of what was an old model, what was a current model, what I would be allowed to use in a game. Or, And it turned out that in this bunch of models, there was quite a few, like, really old models. And I just didn't think anything of it. Like, I, I just thought that was all the current models and yeah. they were Space Marines, so I was going to paint them and I'd be able to use them in a game or whatever. I mean, funny enough, a lot of the old stuff is still, like, fieldable in games. Now, yeah, right? yeah, I mean... I I, t- I remember turning up to um, a like local game like evening at a, a gaming club, and I had a couple of friends who I used to work uh, who I used to work with, and they'd found out that I got back into it, so we started talking. And then I think I actually bumped into them at Warhammer Fest 2019 or something as well. Um, although this actually this would have been before that. Anyway, so they they were you know invite like teaching me how to play the game and i turn up with all these models and like some of them are so old and i had uh like an original like uh rhino or whatever which was like tiny compared to (laughs) what it was supposed to be and um they were explaining how like most people when you rock up to a game will probably just be like oh that's amazing that's so cool yeah some people might have a problem with it because size differences and at right. the time like line of sight whatever like all this stuff so that was my first actual even like me realizing that oh there is old models and there's new models and it's not just a continuous thing um but i had i did strip and repaint some of them so i painted um again they're not necessarily like from that era they're not the 90s ones i haven't painted necessarily anything from the 90s but um the metal the old metal scouts Mm. don't know what year they're from but i painted some of those ones with the combat knives and stuff i had you know an okay time painting them i wasn't trying to paint anything to a higher level at that point so maybe i wasn't paying as much attention to it yeah but it was noticeably hard to like clean them and it looked worse than when I was painting a plastic marine. You know what I mean? I there's a lot of like uh, interpretation of detail that used to happen as well. Yeah, to now. yeah. Now it's like, that is an edge. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And then, then it was like, you have to make sure you carry on that straight line across there. Across this rounded surface. Yeah, yeah. and then black out that little bit yeah, so it yeah, looks yeah. like a shadow or yeah. something. I mean, that's obviously to do with like how they were cast and whatnot. I mean, you still get that. Not so much with multi-part resin kits, but obviously like single cast resin kits, you still kind of have that a you bit. Do, in, in fairness, you do get some of that on even modern models. Even on plastics, where like, yeah. Like they'll say there'll be like a a purity seal hanging off of something and then maybe at the right angle you look yeah. at it and the purity seal looks about like four you know, inches thick. Do you know what does have it? And this drove me mad because I had to clean all of these because it was for GD. On the new Black Templar Crusaders, where the like 
loincloth like drapes over their knee pad there's like a bit of a sort of like bridging gap sort of like flange behind the knee pad mm. and if you was, wanted to grow a lunatic like me you have to go in there with a hobby knife and like cut it back out yeah um, it still does happen there's a few bits but... like that on the newer stuff but yeah so that I don't I have a few older models at home that I'm like one day yeah, waiting I'll, for the phone I'll, to ring. One day I'll strip them and and repaint them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nothing. I I've never painted anything from like nineties era or like early nineties era. Which is, I've got some like boxed stuff. Yeah, which I'll get onto in a, in a little bit because there is some stuff from the nineties <laughs> that I I do love. What but, do you think of the design style changes? I, one of the arguments I hear all the time is like, oh, Primaris Marines or like newer Marines or even just general modern kits, like they have no character. And I, in fairness, I kind of get what they're saying. Because if you look at like a lot of the old characters, especially the 90s stuff, there's a certain sort of charm to them, individuality to them, which I think is probably translated through the fact that they're hand sculpted. But I, I actually think it's a weird one because I, I do kind of agree like you. Yeah. But then I also think almost every model, no matter what it was back then, kind of almost looked like a rank and file, like could fit next to each other. That like they were all like just in a similar pose, like just sort of stood there. Yeah. To say that the modern models don't have character is kind of crazy to me. Mm. Like I get it. You can find like you can still find some modern models boring. You don't have to just to say they have character doesn't mean you have to like love every single one. Like some of them can be boring, some of them can have less character than others. But I don't really see how older ones have more character than newer ones. Like to look at like I don't know what well, like whatever model you pick. I was nearly going to say the lion, but to be like <laughs> not like look at like the Abaddon model or even like. K Van Shrike or something or Gasgol that you did recently like there's plenty of character in those models yeah I think the argument more comes from like general like rank and file stuff so like intercessors and stuff I like guess that. so because I think because I mean I'm partially ignorant on the subject but I think most of it was hand sculpted then right so like everything mm. had to be like somewhat individual I guess yeah but then and the, I, the flip I, side of that is when you buy two packs of those models, they're all in the exact same poses. They all look exactly the same. I was never, from a gaming point of view, I was never someone who cared if two models were exactly the same model, personally. I think people like, I, I don't know. I, if I'm looking at an army and there's 30 intercessors on there, I don't really but care. They already look basically the same. Yeah, you could put them in whatever poses you want. They're going to all look the same anyway. But so with those older models, I think because there was just a bit more difference in each one, they looked a bit more individual. But then, like I said, that doesn't always work when you've got to buy two of them. I, I do think, like, I, I do struggle to believe, though, that you could look at five intercessors from a box now and look at five marines from a box back then. And I struggle to believe that the ones from back then look more individual to each other than the, the intercessors now. They are, they're all built to be in different poses and stuff like that. What people don't like is that they can't choose poses and stuff, which you couldn't do back then either. Mm. That happened in between with the yeah. tactical marines. You used to be able to choose what direction the body was facing, choose what they were, they were way more customizable, the tactical marines. So it's almost like some mixed signals of, yeah. uh, being, being done there. Cause it's like, a, the thing that I think people are missing with the intercessors is what you could do with the tactical marines, which is the customization. I don't you didn't have that with the nineties ones either. I think people so. always remember things being better as they were. I mean, on the flip side now, there is so many products like in the ranges that you didn't have then. I mean, there I, I is that, hundreds of kits. That is like the main point of what I wanted to get across from this conversation is that like it's not to bash on the old stuff. Not at like, all. Not at all. The old stuff's cool. If you like the old stuff, that's cool. If you prefer it, fine. I don't think either of us even dislike the old exactly, stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But it's more this thing of like, as someone who isn't naturally uh, nostalgic for it, at one point in your 
experience in this hobby, you'll start to feel like you have to be nostalgic for it. Yeah. And it's like, but I'm not. Yeah. I like the current stuff. And you'll be surrounded by all the people that are just moaning about the new stuff and telling you how good it was in 1994. And I'm like, but I, I, don't I don't get that do you know yeah. what I mean I don't have that feeling and I think it's this almost this like inability to just admit that, that, that it's pretty good at the moment like what you can get <laughs> at the moment is quite good the paints are decent there's more choice than ever like there's infinite choice the models are, we're getting a new model revealed every week or whatever like Mol it's like can't honestly yeah. tell me there's new massive box sets coming out all the time you always can't new skulls. honestly tell me that you'd rather they all looked and everything like they did 30 years ago. Yeah. And plus, I always feel like the old boxes are, are out there. You can find them. You can play second edition if you want. You can paint that box. Like you can, it's not, the, what, whatever happens now, intercessors and stuff, is not bothering that. They happened. They're there. They're out in the world. You can still get them if that's what you prefer kind of thing. Um, I think that's one of the beauties about it is that I, even if Games Workshop remove rules for certain models and things like that, it's like you can still play you're it. Painting with your friends, or you're playing with your friends. Like, do you know what's funny is um, you can just use the old rules then, or well, play me, the version that you prefer. Or me and my friends got into Kill Team in uh, right before the new edition came out. And I remember everyone being like, "Oh, it's like a new edition." Like, got, we've all got to play this one now. And I remember then people weren't too keen on the rules. And everyone was like kind of upset that they like now had to play this new version that they didn't like. And even my friends were a bit like, oh, does that mean we've got to get the new book now? And I'm like, we can still just can play, just play the old one. We still have the book. We have the models. We can still yeah. play it. Like, yeah, but let's just play the old one. Yeah. Let's just play the one that we know and yeah. we like then. Like, I feel like it, I don't know what has happened to stop that being people's like first thought. Mm. Oh, this is being. The, this has been uh, officially like discontinued now. Unless you quite oh, now, I can't. Unless you are quite literally like someone who's on the bleeding edge of tournament play. Obviously, that's different. But Other like, than that, I don't really understand that argument. To be yeah, entirely honest, obviously that's different. Like you get people playing games that are thirty years old still. Like they're still there. So the new stuff is. Have you heard of Monopoly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I meant within more. Uh, I meant within tabletop gaming and stuff. Yeah, I think it, it's it's this weird like pressure to feel nostalgic about it however one thing i will say that i do absolutely adore from the retro stuff and i do kind of wish that it could come back in some way i get why it's not but the old just general like design in terms of not the miniatures but the, the everything else the the packaging, the store design, the cover of the box. logos, the box art, the mm. the codexes, the all of that looks very cool to me. Like I love that design style, that old kind of. They all, it all looks like I made an album art. You know what I mean? Like I've just realised the irony of us having this conversation and there's literally a second. Yeah, yeah. Box, we should have replaced it with some one of the newer ones. Oh, had. James is gone. You could have had your Dark Angels up. Oh, that would have been funny, actually. That would have been funny. Anyway, um, all of that, I do gravitate towards that more. I think the newer stuff, again, it's one of those things where like the artwork is really cool still. But for me, the older artwork, even for someone who wasn't around for it, I do look at it and I'm like, I've got a couple of older sealed boxes and stuff like that at home. And it just looks... I, it looks more like a toy, so I guess that's why people because the is bright that, colors make. Is it look that more your like nostalgia a toy. coming in in that fact? Uh, Do you think you're well? No, but I'm talking about ones that I'm not even nostalgic for. I'm right. talking about these early '90s ones that I wasn't. But if you saw like some stores. sealed boxes from like when you first got into the hobby of like the kits you remember, do you think you'd be nostalgic? I for think that? so. Yeah, I think so. If I saw like a sealed Battle from a Crag box or something, I would be, I would be very nostalgic for that. But I'm talking about. The ones, the 90s stuff that everyone's really nostalgic for with like the, if it's a Blood Angels box, it's like bright red border. Mm -hmm. If it's a Dark Angels one, it's like a bright green border. And all the old logos, like the the original like kind of fake metallic looking yeah, like yeah. metal logos. I do love that design style a lot more than 
the more serious, like grim, dark design style. But I get why you can't really maintain that now. I, I don't think it would work as well now. I think I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for packaging. I quite like the minimal, like clean aesthetic, like mm. of the newer stuff, personally. But that doesn't mean that it's quite, it's not like if it's not if or like do you know what I mean? Like I think the older stuff looks cool and the new stuff looks cool. I don't feel like you have to like love one or hate another. No, 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 like, definitely not. I think I don't really care personally. I mean, like we all order stuff online now, right? Like we're all looking at the yeah, yeah. I guess that's so, the reality of a lot of and it. And even but, for me saying just now, like I, I, you know, miss how the store, like the Warhammer stores used to feel or, or look. They look mostly the same, yeah. to be fair. Like, and, and I don't go into them But even that with often. like the rule books and stuff, it's like everyone's using PDFs now and yeah. downloading rules on the phone or the eBooks or whatever. Yeah. So that, that is where more where my nostalgia is kicks in I suppose yeah but I wouldn't I still wouldn't I don't know maybe I think the game would be too like or the 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 whole thing would be too different now if they'd stayed like that yeah maybe it would be cool to see but I, I get the same with like loads of other stuff that's like it where like obviously I'm into football and you get people that love retro football kits yeah. rather than new football kits and it's like, yeah, they look cool, but you couldn't wear that now. <laughs> like, it would look mental. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's advertising some cigarette company that went out of business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so it's just, there's loads of different stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that, that it, it is an interesting thing that no one ever seems to push back on. Like, it's just a known thing. You just have to be nostalgic for Goblin Green bases. Yeah, um, I've never got that. I don't get it. You just have to be. And I'm like, but I'm sort of not. Like they they were done by the time I was Yeah. They they were gone, I'm pretty sure, by the time I was getting into it. So have you uh have you dabbled with any of the retro paints um in recent times? Not really, to be honest. I don't think I have. The only ones I've proper used was when me and James painted the uh Hawk Logs for the Leviathan release for tenth edition. James wanted to use a uh, leash purple for the base coat. Hmm. How was that? To say that that was the biggest headache of my life at that point would be underselling it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried to use any of these retro paints. If you haven't, they are a nightmare. <laughs> they are like watery. They're thin. They have terrible coverage. We airbrushed it on. But then when you come in with a brush to touch it up, it, it comes on a different color. <laughs> like, explain that to me. Like, I actually, like, if there's any chemists watching, like, actually explain to me how I can spray something through an airbrush onto a model that is the same paint to full opacity. It's not like, oh, we only done like a light coat. It's like, no, we proper, proper went mm. to town. It's fully opaque cover. And then I'd make like a little mistake on it with a highlight and I'd have to go in with the old paint and touch it up and it'd make it worse. <laughs> It's a nightmare. Yeah. Absolute nightmare. Can't help. And this was that. a sealed pot. This wasn't like a case of like, um, oh, it dried you know, out. when people get the dried out ones and they try to like revive them and like rehydrate mm -hmm. them. No, this was like fresh, like tore off the peel away seal, brand new paint, perfect consistency. Mm. Nightmare. I say perfect consistency. It was terrible consistency, but you yeah, know what I mean? The, the, the closest I've come is I used some coat arms paints. Yeah, which is the company that, but I think people get this wrong a lot, and I even I don't know the full extent of it. But people always go, "Oh, that's who used to make it like Games Workshop paints in the nineties." And I, I think there's, I think it's a bit more complicated, than complicated that. Yeah. than that. It's not just like if you go and buy coat to arms paints now, they are the paints. But there's from some the sort 90s. of lineage there to some degree. I'm sure it was something along the lines of the same, like they helped produce them in the early days or something like sure. that. Uh, anyway, I've used some of those and they, they do seem to share a lot of the properties that people say about the older GW paints. Obviously, they're slightly modernized. And I do actually, quite. there's a few colors from them that I actually really like, but they are all quite thin, like mm. say. You've got to pick your jobs with them. I wouldn't be sitting there base coating necessarily with them. Um, and I tried some of those like, Nostalgia 88. Oh, yeah, I remember things. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, 
We spoke about briefly before with the blood red because I, I when I got them, I got James a blood red one. Right. Um, did it match? I don't know if it matched exactly, but he did say like like fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty spot on. Um, but I got that for to match the old. There's an old color called tin bits. Yeah. The I never really got to use, but it's brilliant color. Like it is brilliant. Do you know what I will say? I hate to say this. Hmm. James is right. The blood red is like mega vibrant. It's mental. It's actually ridiculous. That um, like it is vibrant as hell. I wouldn't want to use it. It's not enough to make me want to use it. (laughs) But I will admit that I've not seen anything as vibrant as vibrant as that in the paint ranges that I've used personally. There might be something, but Uh, yeah, maybe that is the key. It's like luminous. It like reflects light. Like it could take your eye out. That's probably you know, just because like it's got some like, it's developed some like chemical thing you know, over like in, the years. You know in Pulp Fiction when they like open the briefcase and their yeah. face is like glowing like gold. Yeah. I feel like if you had like a box with when your you, When you it. walk into James's house, your face glows exactly. red. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I get that. When he brought that captain in the other day. It's nuts. Yeah. I was like, that is actually the brightest thing, the, the brightest model I've ever seen. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And he said something. Oh, yeah. It, that model, or like the captain that he did for the Warhammer Heroes thing, that went on the thumbnail for a previous episode. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and the, the Hawk Laws did as well. Yeah. And he was like, oh, that thumbnail's bright. And I was like, well, you painted the models <laughs> yeah. with your 90s paints. That's why. It's not Photoshop, James. They're yeah. just that bright. Yeah. 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 So I've, yeah, I've not really uh, dabbled too much. You're not selling it to me, if I'm honest. No. We'll no. have to see what, what James has especially, to say. Especially, uh, do you know what especially does it for me? They are so expensive, like retro paints to buy. Don't get me wrong, you can get some deals. Like you can, but if you've got someone who knows what, if you're on eBay and you're on like the seller clearly knows what they have. Yeah. When it's one of those listings and you're like looking at like 40 quid for a part of some of these colors, like it is not happening. Like I don't care how good the color is. The ones you want to try and find are someone's just gone to college or something, yeah. and their mum has decided, I'm going to sell all this rubbish. Also, with those, though, they eBay. tend to be the opened ones where it's a bit more like of a dice roll of yeah. if it's going to be dried out. Uh, or... Yeah, I definitely, I would have to love those paints quite a lot to also then have to go through the headache of sourcing That's them on the eBay, thing, right? hoping yeah. that they're fine, or paying extra for them to be sealed. And then, on top of that, you get the paint and it's a nightmare at you. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not ticking many boxes for me personally. I I do think it's pop more... down to GW. Get a does pot anyone like <laughs> for three quid? Other than James, though, does anyone that you've spoken to, even when they're nostalgic about the '90s stuff, does anyone actually still always use like '90s paints? I don't know. I can't think of anyone who does. Like, I feel James like people, does. There's like, people who have them for like special occasions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, oh, if I'm going to paint this gemstone, I'm going to get out a bit of the old like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But no, James is a complete different. The, the case. key, the key, does seem to be the vibrancy. The vibrancy seems to be the thing that you can't currently replicate. I didn't personally feel like the hawk courts we done were any more vibrant than like another purple I could have used. That sounds like a challenge. That sounds like you got to put that to the test. You got to paint yourself a hawk lord using modern only paints and put it next to the. The Lich Purple. I could do that. Yeah. And then we'll see. Yeah. Because they're pretty vibrant. It's vibrant, but like it didn't like blow me away like the Blood Red does. Mm. I don't know that the Leash one is quite a hard, a hard one to get, one of the more expensive. That's ones. another popular one that yeah. people like loved. Yeah. I think just, just similar to when I came out and I took a stand about using the magnifiers, <laughs> I'm going to take a stand. Don't feel like you have to be nostalgic for stuff if you're if you're like when the primary stuff come out I loved it they announced Intercessor and I thought this is br- they're brilliant yeah everyone was telling me that I'm glad you said it. that because when I first started getting into the hobby primary was already out mm. but Firstborn was still like very much Nothing alongside it and I remember first discovering because I when I got back into it I just went back to what I knew which was like old Marines so when I was looking for them I just found like the same ones that I had when I was a kid and then I remember finding the Primaris intercessors and I was like these are sick these are way better yeah I loved when they first announced it I loved it they look awesome I love them and all you were being told was that oh they're not as good as the old 
they're not as good as tactical Marines. Oh, what have they done? Whatever. Obviously, all of those people still bought primary yeah. Marines. But like, yeah, I, I, I just feel like you get you get sort of forced to be nostalgic about stuff that you might not actually be nostalgic about. And it's fine. Just be like, no, like, I, I would have, uh, to be fair, say like Darren Latham's challenge thing, I probably would have done something like that mm. if I had the time or they, those Marines didn't become that's instantly. Di- that's kind of a different thing though, is it? Because that's, that was a painting challenge. That was a like, yeah. are you up to the test of painting an old model in an old style? Like, let's see how different it is. That yeah, was like, yeah. that was like a, an, an experience in a vacuum. That's what I'm saying. I don't want it to come across like, we're like, bad mouthing either the people that are nostalgic for it or the people no, that do that all. kind of not stuff or or whatever but yeah just maybe because I, I, I just find interesting myself... that I, I just find interesting that you never hear people speak out on the other side like yeah. people who aren't yeah, into like, it like it's yeah not that you have to it's again it's not that you have to be into it or against it it's you're just to... you can you're allowed to be indifferent about it yeah yeah like when all this retro stuff's going on I'm just like yeah it's not really not really for me like it's fine to just not have to say that one's better than the other. I don't know why you're Do not you know allowed I mean? to like new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that is funny when you think about it. it. But it's the same as like, again though, I feel like we've had conversations about like bands and stuff before. Yeah. Where this has been a, this has been a topic and I feel the same thing where I'm like, yeah, it, like we were talking about someone you'd be like, what, you like the new album as well? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 it's good. It's not as good as the old one, but it's good. Yeah. I like it. But you yeah. can still listen to the old one. Yeah, yeah, you can still listen to the old one. The old a band fine. will have like a change, and they'll like change their sound and be like, "We've doing, we've been doing this music for twenty years. We found it sounding a bit different." And yeah. everyone will be like, "Oh, the sellouts or the change, whatever." <laughs> yeah. It's like you can listen to the old. Yeah, album. it's still there. They didn't like break into your house and like destroy your CDs and your Spotify library. Yeah, and say like, no, you've got you've got like the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, like they're gonna do a. 15 year anniversary of that album don't worry they like money you'll be fine <laughs> don't worry they like money yeah, yeah. Um, but it's the same kind of thing like I, uh, being nost- even even just saying being nostalgic for that old stuff doesn't have to mean hating the new stuff I yeah. suppose it goes both ways doesn't it, it does it does yeah we wanted to let you know that we have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studios shop whether you want to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character that you're painting you need a new airbrush painting accessories or want to book a class you'll find what you need we also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock now, head over to cstudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Right, should we do a question of the week? Yeah. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions. If you have something that you would like us to answer on the show, please leave it in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, Sam Casey 661 says, I've been here since before Jamesisms were a thing. <laughs> First of all, you haven't. This has been going on for years. <laughs> But thank you very maybe, much. Maybe before we started acknowledging them on on air, though. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, appreciate the uh, appreciate the long term viewing. Uh, if you were to have your three D modelled face on a marine within a Warhammer World exhibition, which chapter would you choose, and in what pose or situation would your model be in? Wow. Okay. Um, so we've we've taken. You've done like you've you've stood there. You've done like the you've done the pose. You've been like fully three D scanned. Yeah. Right. You've been digitized. And We've I'm, made a model of you. Yeah. It's a space marine though. It's a space marine. So we need to know what chapter you're going to be, and what situation, scenario, diorama your model is going to be in. Dark Angel, I'm guessing. I mean, that would be the obvious choice. But I might. I mean, you're not going to be able to tell it's me because he's got to have a helmet on. Is it going to have the wings? <laughs> Don't have a winged helmet on. Oh, God. Uh, no, okay, no. I'll be... I think it's similar to the thing where I said about, you know, being cast in a film. Yeah. I'd rather be like a poxwalker or whatever. With this, I feel like I want to be getting shot or something. Like, I want to be dying yeah. in this. I, everyone wants like a good death scene or something. So I think I have to be getting... I'm... I can be a dark angel, I guess. Like I, that's the most suitable for me, probably. I think maybe I'm like being, I'm like being overrun by like tyranids or something, like going off the back of a building. <laughs> so like I'm about to fall off of like 
You know, like Warhammer World, there's the huge yeah, yeah. tower thing. Yeah. Maybe I'm at the top of that. You're at the very top. I'm at the top of that. And I'm like angling off the side, falling backwards because Tyranids are just rushing up on me. And I'm all like, I'm all like. And as a super soldier, you choose the easy way out of, I'm just going to jump off this ledge. No, I'm not jumping. I'm being like pushed back. Oh, right. Like I'm, they're on me. Uh-huh. Like I'm being like, I'm, I don't know. Sorry for the audio listeners, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like leaning back a little bit. Uh, I'm like I'm trying like I'm still shooting them uh-huh. or something yeah. common dark angels L I think I think that's that's the cool that's a cool way to go I think I want do you know what I want similar thing though do you know at Warhammer World there's that um, diorama and it's like this crashed flyer and it's kind of like Black Hawk Down yeah yeah I want to be like in the middle of that like I'm on this crashed like Thunderhawk or something and there's like full 360 degrees like coming yeah. at me but I'm like double uh, locking and loading yeah, the pistols yeah, and I'm yeah. like right akimbo like, yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah sick and I guess I'd do I'm not going to do blood angels I'm going to do black templars because I'm fond of them uh, yeah. with the history of that so yeah cool if anyone wants to do that diorama either one feel free <laughs> feel free you've got to spare 400 hours kicking about yeah. we know you have if you want to smuggle that marine of me into Warhammer World and put it on. <laughs> oh my God, that's the perfect crime. Can you imagine like breaking into Warhammer World? Like <laughs> full like in a space full kit, balaclava your... on. You break in, like there's the cameras, there's the footage you're in there with the crowbar, like yeah. full scenes. And, you and all a... you do is you break into the exhibition centre, you climb in behind the cabinet and you just place a single space marine. Of you yourself. Leave. Of yourself, yeah. Into the diorama. Uh-huh. And you leave. Yeah. Don't do that though, obviously, for obvious reasons. Please do not do that. Please do not do that. I feel like if I worked at Warhammer World, I'd always be constantly putting Easter eggs in those uh, in those little diorama. I feel like they um they kind of do because they do the the uh, assassin kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. But I I wouldn't be because I would be way too scared to touch any of that stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go anywhere near. No, but like if you was the guy who was like making them, who had to. It's not a oh guy. It's not one okay. person. No, if you're like on a team, right? Yeah, yeah, and you was making the dioramas, I would install my face probably on every single one. <laughs> Being honest, like in a video game, when there's like a yeah. little Easter egg from the the creator or something, exactly like name written in the sand, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I'll just smuggle like three D printed heads in my face. <laughs> George was here <laughs> on the battle battlefield. That's just that'd be a great diorama. Actually, now I want to do a diorama of someone in like the back of a rhino, just like scribing <laughs> yeah. the name in. Oh, brilliant. Right, uh, to close out the show, we have a weekly tradition called Hobby Hacks. This is yeah. where we share a uh, quick little tip that you can incorporate. Mm-hmm. I've got one that I learned from James of all people. This is something that I didn't know bothered me until I saw someone else not... Like, I saw someone else had solved the problem that I didn't know I had. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. James always take... You know, like an airbrush. You've got like the, the air cap like around the needle. So not like, I don't mean the nozzle, I mean like just the little protective. Yeah, he takes it off. James takes his off and he's just got like bare exposed needle. Yeah. And I always thought that that was like, ask him for trouble. I'm like, this is not a problem. Like there is no issue with having the air cap on. Why would you add this risk factor? But then after I'd like seen him do that and I went back home and I was doing some airbrushing, I realized how much paint like accrues. Just clogs on and that like, thing. Yeah. Just, you end up with eventually this like sort of like droplet that's like waiting to get like launched at your model yeah, and like a big gob of paint fire at it because what I used to do was before I got um, a H&S Infinity which is the one which has like the tiny little almost non-existent air caps just this little bit of bit of metal I used to buy those and put them on all my airbrushes even though I didn't have like the expensive one that came with it and then I finally got an Infinity and it like came with it and I'm like right brilliant mm-hmm. but even now I'm like no you know what I'm taking that off. I'm going <laughs> full bare needle yeah I I guess because James taught me how to use an airbrush, that's one of the first things he told me. So I've yeah. always done that as well. However, I did drop it. Yeah, there is that. I did drop it, completely bend the needle. Yeah, there is that. Like to I don't right think you've angle. even got, you don't realize how fragile an airbrush needle is until you've exposed it. Because yeah. you haven't even got to drop it. Even like putting it in um, your little like cleaning pot thing, even just like hitting the bit of rubber a bit too hard. Like yeah, there's so- such finely precise they're such fine and precise like machined parts like even if you can't see a kink in it or a little bend in it mm. like you will notice when you're spraying it yeah that is just the one caveat I there is a risk factor that, involved because like again replacing a decent airbrush needle 
replacing the needle is fairly cheap, I suppose. Like but twelve quid. Yeah. Um, but you know, you'd rather not, wouldn't you? Twelve quid. It's not just that. It's like the inconvenience of like if you haven't got one like spare laying around. It's like, oh, now I've got to order one. Now I've got to order one. Oh, there's a minimum order cost. Yeah. I've got to pay for shipping. I've been there like trying to bend it back. Oh, I've bent it back. Like you can do it. Yeah, I know. You can but do it. it's never. If it don't right, if you've completely mullered it. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You need a new needle, but like I've had. Little, I did like, straighten it. I did manage to straighten it out again when I did mine, but it was like wavy. Do you know what I mean? Like, what you mean? At the end of it, it wasn't like... No, I've had a couple of times where I've had like a tiny little like... You know when you have like a cheap synthetic brush and it gets that little like hook on the end? Yeah. I've had that and I've been able to straighten that out before. But it's it's not ideal. I feel like if I got that, I'd just leave it. you just leave it? Well, yeah. you're just going to spray your model like perpendicular and it's just like a full 90 Yeah, degree. I'll just be doing like... Yeah, I'll just set up a different aim. I'm just, that's what I'll probably that's do. That's so unpredictable. Because like. then you can like, if you, if you spit the needle and all of a sudden it's firing up. Yeah. Oh, you got to adapt. you got to adapt. <laughs> Improvise, adapt, don't become. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Right. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Uh, if you could do us a massive, massive favor, if you could please follow us or subscribe on YouTube, that would really, really help the podcast in more ways than you know. And you can continue to enjoy all these episodes for free every single Friday. Uh, thank you very much. We'll catch you next week. Bye.